Hello, yes people. I'm trying to do it as well as clear. Hello, yes people. We are the Yes Girls and today we're going on a journey. So buckle up. What kind of journey you, you may ask? Well, a journey of a thousand miles. The kind that begins with a single step. As the wise Lao Tzu would say. Mm -hmm. And I'm joining in on this proverbial journey. Firstly, not proverbial. Secondly, of course you can join in. You should. Actually, you must. Must? Really? Enlighten me. I believe Raina Maria Rilke said it best. The only journey is the one within. What? And today, Claire, we are taking a ship. Hmm, maybe a yacht, depending on what you want. <laughs> and we are taking a thousand mile journey within. Okay, this sounds intriguing, but what should I carry with me for this special journey within? Nothing. All you need to do, as Brandy once said, is come as you are. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just had to sing it in case you didn't know which song that was. <laughs> I still don't know which song that was. And I'm not sure it's Brandy's fault. <laughs> anyway, enough beating about the bush. Uh, I think we need to tell these yes people what this episode is about. And guys, don't panic. It's certainly not a singing episode. <laughs> yeah, you're lucky it's not. So, yeah, no more singing, okay? Maybe I should just introduce us. Yes, please. So, this person right here is Akumu. And I'm Claire. <laughs> and we are the, the yes, yes Girls. Girls. Oh, God, look at her. <laughs> and we, the Yes Girls, are two Nairobi-based wanderlusters who are making it our mission to say yes to doing, being, and learning something different every two weeks. And we are documenting our journeys. Why? Because as Claude Bernard once said, man can learn nothing except by going through the known, from the known to the unknown. And that's exactly why we do, we, what we do for every episode and why we do this podcast. So this very podcast is a strange and interesting result of us saying yes to sometimes challenging, sometimes fun, sometimes entertaining, and sometimes downright, out okay, I'll stop singing, downright outrageous experiences. <laughs> yes, please stop singing forever. No, I'm joking. I encourage your exploits. <laughs> so in this episode, it's my turn to say yes, and it's a being episode. So I'm saying yes to being something. So similar to all other episodes of season two, we're taking it in turns to say yes to something the other yes girl is already an expert or a relative expert in. In this season, we're also inviting honorary yes girls and boys to join us. Yes, and here's a quick recap. In the first episode of this season, Claire said yes to learning how to draw a portrait, which ended up being Obama, along with Akumu's nephew, Jaden. <laughs> sounded like you said Obama. It wasn't Obama. O Obama. It was Obama. Yes. Akumu said yes to doing pole dancing together with Kate Ladash. Woo. And then Claire said yes to doing social media management with the, with the dynamic duo, Max and Maria. After that, Akumu said yes to being an online tour guide together with Agoro Adiambo and to learning about clean energy with Laura Ombok. And then we find ourselves here today, right, right now, now, right this here. moment, when Claire will explain how she, yes, she said yes to. Oh, was that my cue? Yes. <laughs> Do, 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 do. Being a self-help addict or self-help guru. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't want to call it self-helper because self-helper has a bad connotation on online. Oh, okay. And guru are the people who actually write books. I could, I could write a book now. Anyway, more on that later. Next season, So that's maybe. why Kumu has been dropping quotes like a self-help guru and why she will not allow us to prosper without them until this episode is over. At least I hope so. <laughs> so please bear with us or with her. And I guess now is as good a time as any to... Get on with the episode. Indeed, as Eckhart Tolle once oh, said, gosh. realize deeply that the present moment is all you ever have. Make the now the primary focus of your life and indeed of this very episode. Amen. <laughs> Uh, before introducing the honorary Yes Girls who joined Claire on this journey within, allow us to share some insights from one of you. Yes. Uh, one of you, Yes, people. Uh, actually, rather, let, let, we are sharing uh, something <laughs> from a no person. Mm -hmm. That's right. We are thinking of letting no intrude our yes space for <gasps> once. So stay tuned because we just might consider such a scenario for future episodes. I'm still waiting for an invitation to be the no girl. Well, that gives me all sorts of ideas. 
But let's sidebar on that one, Akumu. Yes, please. So whether or not we'll allow a no person to infiltrate our sacred space, we would still appreciate it if you said yes to sending your own voice clips about our episodes via our Anchor page. So spelled out A-N-C-H-O-R, anchor.fm slash podcast. You just click on the message button and start talking. Of course, you could also slide into our DMs anytime you like, baby. <laughs> That's uh, at Yes Girls Podcast <laughs> on Instagram or Twitter. And in case you're not commenting on a particular episode or maybe just want to say hi, feel free to stalk us online or to ask for some merch. We've had a lot of requests for Yes Girls merchandise, like T-shirts, hoodies, water bottles. So if you're interested, talk to us. And if we get enough demand, we might just listen to you all because you've been listening to us. Yes. So now let's jump into today's episode. Yes. So, I said yes to doing what Akumu has been doing for years now. Being a self-help addict, you could say. Mm -hmm. This means Akumu watched me with happy tears in her eyes oh, as I researched, they read, grew up so fast. watched videos, and set myself a self-help challenge. Here's a little clip of our book club, which is how one of the first ways we first met, one of them, mm -hmm. explaining just how different we are when it comes to the self-help world. <laughs> So I think Claire has a trauma related to self-help books from when she was a child. I think what happened is that um, she was playing next to a, a bookshelf and there was a small earthquake and okay. a book, a self-help book <laughs> fell on her head. And since then, she's never, oh she's never recovered. She needs, she needs to see a counselor. Yeah. <laughs> and and, and why, why do you think I'm so addicted to them? You never had that book hit your head. <laughs> That's true. That's very true. Okay. Okay. Thank you. No earthquakes in Kenya. Exactly. Thank you. And to join me on this journey within, the Yes Girls invited not just one, but two honorary Yes people. Yep. For this challenge, Claire was joined by... Melissa um... Bogua and Josephine Karianjahe. Now, you'll want to remember those two names because... Both Melissa and Josephine are happily building the future of African media, primarily as co-directors of Africa Podfest, which is an outfit that strives to inspire and uh, elevate creators in Africa who are looking to create and grow their podcasts. Beyond their co-director capacities, they are also podcasters themselves, which is amazing. Melissa uh, has a podcast called Pros and Possibilities, it's a podcast that brings together dreamers and doers to imagine a better future for the world. And Josephine has one that's called This I Can Do, which is a podcast focused on creativity uh, and impact around the world. And by the way, that's not all. Melissa is also part of the team behind Nairobi Film Festival, uh, hashtag NBO Film Fest. And Josephine is on the board of the Action Foundation Kenya. Beyond all that, they're both thinkers, makers, connectors, entrepreneurs, oh. consultants, innovators, artists, whew, and now they are in, they are honorary yes girls. Yes, Ab above and beyond everything else. Yes. And these two very impressive honorary yes girls joined me as we each honed in on a specific aspect of the self-help jungle so that we could get a glimpse of this paradise, as Akuma would call it, the self-help paradise. Yes. So the idea was that Melissa, Josephine, and myself would have to select whatever school of thought or book or concept that felt useful and timely to ourselves, each of us, and we'd spend a week trying to live by it and be it or create a system to, to allow us to, to live by it. So I thought uh, it would be best to have zero strictness on the things uh, that they would have to do or the things that they, I mean, things that could be done, right? Because I wanted each of them to have agency. Um, more like they would have to use the framework, but uh, any framework we give them, you know, just one week, choose a concept, blah, blah. Uh, and they have to use it however much they like, whatever aspect of self-help they want to focus on. And off they went to begin their week. So Claire, take it away. So there's a very funny thing with me. I can be vehemently anti-self-help, but then start a podcast called The Yes Girls, which is categorized as self-help. Yeah, because we had no choice, really. Well, we did. And in the what same way, I've never read and mm -hmm. insist I will never read a self-help book. <laughs> but then my favorite podcast, or one of them, is called By the Book, where two female co-hosts live by a different self-help book every week and record their experiences. 
it might sound familiar. <laughs> um, so thank you, Jalenta Greenberg and Kristen Meinzer for getting me through some very tough times and in part inspiring this podcast. Mm -hmm. So all this to say I may be the most self-help, anti-self-helper there is wow. to start with. So when Akumul sent me this challenge to be a self-help enthusiast slash addict slash amateur for a week and embrace that which I so indiscriminately reject, I was intrigued. That's good. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And thankfully, I had two very down-to-earth and cheerful co-challengees, Melissa and Josephine, who were coming along with me on this journey and who were interested in self-help but certainly didn't have much of a history with it. That not not they didn't have the same profile as me being kind of anti, uh, but they weren't deep in it. Now, funnily enough, in having listened to every single episode of By the Book, this favorite podcast of mine, I actually know most or many of the schools of thought of self help out there. Right. Mm -hmm. So the first challenge was to choose our position or school of thought or set of rules, and I decided to be as broad as possible and choose a, choose a book about self talk. Mm -hmm. Okay, something that. I think would be good for me. Mm -hmm. um, a reason for this. Maybe one of the reasons that I'm so outwardly anti-self-help is because I don't want people to know that I need help. I try to project a kind of self-deprecating but confident exterior. I try. Uh, the girl that doesn't need to brush her hair but actually doesn't brush her hair because she thinks that if she does, people will realize that she still looks terrible. Mm. I'm the girl that makes fun of herself so that she gets to do it before or instead of other people. It's a defense mechanism, right? So admitting to needing help would be just a vulnerable step too far. So if we call it self-development, is that better? <laughs> I don't know, really. Um, so the idea of... Um, Choosing a book about self-talk is so that I could take back some control from mm -hmm. myself mm -hmm. over what I tell myself, right? Mm -hmm. So here's a clip from the first day of the challenge after doing some research. So just after doing my research on my self-help book that I will be living by, I realized that I do talk to myself negatively even without realizing it. Even things where I blame situations as opposed to myself driving in the car, in traffic, thinking I should have left earlier, or this person is stupid. The idea behind this sort of being challenge is that it's not a physical exertion. It's not learning a new skill, but it's a way of being, a way of life. So in everything I did for that week, I tried to engage in positive self-talk. So the book I chose is called What to Say When You Talk to Yourself by Shad Helmstetter. I, of course, did not read the whole book because no one has time for that. But I found some online summaries. I listened to the Buy the Book episode about it. And in mm -hmm. a nutshell, oh, they had it there. Oh, yeah. That's how I knew about it. Mm -hmm. uh, so here's a quote. You will become what you think about most. She's doing quotes. <laughs> <laughs> your success or failure in anything large or small would depend on your programming what you accept from others, and what you say when you talk to yourself. It is no longer a success theory. It is a simple but powerful fact. Mm -hmm. Neither luck nor desire has the slightest thing to do with it. It makes no difference whether we believe it or not. The brain simply believes what you tell it most. And what you tell it about you, it will create. It has no choice. That sounds like powerful stuff, right? Very powerful. So I decided to talk to myself like a queen and manifest. Funnily enough, it was at this time that the manifest trend was happening on social media. I don't know if you saw that. I, like, I don't know where it originated, but basically, like, the jokes were going around that if you manifest something, it will happen. It's like manifest being on a beach and mm -hmm. someone will pay for you to go to a beach. <laughs> <laughs> so it was good timing. Was it satirical? I have no idea. Okay. Oh, it, it was, yeah, it was completely satirical. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, and also, good timing was this week... Oh, God damn it, this was the week. Oh, <laughs> tell them. Firstly, I got an invite to an intimate audience with Kipchoge, mm. the GOAT. If, it was me. Who is Kipchoge? Eliud Kipchoge. Kipchoge. Can you explain to those the, who don't know? The greatest marathoner of all time. Exactly. It was me, Eliud, the British High Commissioner, some prestigious CEOs, and that's it. And like one of my running buddies. So boy, if you ever need to see proof of manifesting and positive self-talk and bucket loads of blood, sweat and tears, Eliud is it. 
standing and sitting beside him for this evening was just captivating. Mm -hmm. It came out of that soiree feeling like I could also run a sub two hour marathon. I can't, but hey, you know, double that isn't bad, right? Double that is better than maybe three times that for me. <laughs> yeah, better or, than or nothing. Four times. <laughs> then I took part in my first duathlon. A duathlon, for those of you who might not know, is an athletic event involving a running leg, <laughs> pun intended, yeah. followed by a cycling leg and then another running leg, similar to a triathlon, but I'm not a good swimmer. So I've never taken part in any sort of cycling event, but somehow using my positive self-talk mantras, which I had come up with the week before, mm -hmm. I won for my category. Wow. My gender. Wow. So what was my mantra, you may ask? Mm -hmm. Well, I came up with a few of them and stuck them on post-its around my work area. So one says, I am a yes girl. Yay. Another says, I am yeah, worthy. Yeah, it not say yes girl, one or two. It's just you done, yes girl. <laughs> I am a yes, yes. girl. Uh -huh. <laughs> Another says, I am worthy. Wow. And the other has the magic words, not original, but they work for me. I can, I want, I will. I love it. So I can honestly say that during that duathlon, with the rain beating on my face, my calves burning, my hands raw from holding onto the handlebars, mm -hmm. I was self talking my way through that mantra over and over again. I can, I want, I will. I can, I want, I will. I can, I want, I will. So, like, self-help stuff right and it worked mm -hmm. okay, okay i'm not saying i wouldn't have won without it right but to this day i still use it okay mm -hmm. as a way to override any potential spontaneous negative self-talk that would creep in basically if you shout loud enough i can i want i will then you're not leaving space to say oh it hurts i don't think i can i don't think oh, yeah. i can do it exactly can i do this i want to go home yeah so i think this method though basic Definitely has some good to it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, so meanwhile, Mel and Joe were going on their own personal Joe's journeys. So Josephine chose a very similar journey to mine about self-talk, but she went all out doing it out loud. Totally. Here's how her day one went. I, I just love this clip. Day one, I spent the whole day thinking about how I started the morning. The Yes Girls are doing a challenge together, self-help, your style. So I chose to do a self-talk where you get in front of a mirror and you say things to yourself, mostly nice things, some fantastic things, and you have to mean it. And so I did that this morning. And I spent about five minutes talking to myself, complimenting myself, and I ended up dancing to my own little jam about myself. And that was really cool. But what it did for me today was really, I think, really, really, really memorable. Because what happens when you start the day talking to yourself is that when you feel quite silly <laughs> talking to yourself. But then after you get over silliness, you start to feel the effects. So I ended up picking an outfit to wear, where I was going to just wear maybe jeans, something really chill. I ended up wearing a, a really lovely dress and a hat and a spring in my step. So I think day one was a success. All right. Can't wait for day two. Spoiler alert, she carried on in that same spirit and boy, did she have fun with it. She honestly put my self-talk strategy to shame. Mel, on the other hand, took a different approach and based her self-help week on the self-help extraordinaire Brené Brown, the person who Akumu said she would follow off a cliff. Totally. Even <laughs> tomorrow or today. <laughs> Here's her describing what she chose to do for her week of self-helping. Hey, hey, this is Melissa and I am recording my reflections on the Yes Girls Challenge where I chose to, for a week, listen to music that makes me feel most like myself to the songs that make me feel most like myself and this came from a book by Brené Brown called let me just get the name of the book so that I spell it out right the gifts of imperfection let go of who you think you're supposed to be and embrace who you are that's the book by Brené Brown where I got this challenge from and it came at a time where I was feeling like before the challenge, when I had read the book earlier in the year, I felt very 
intimidated and just kind of tired and stressed already by the thought of trying to change my habits <laughs> you know just feeling like oh that's another thing to do another uphill task and I just didn't want to do it but when the yes girls challenge came through I thought okay this is a good opportunity because now there's accountability and so I took it on the challenge was over about a month ago now Mm -hmm. and just a few days ago I was using my self-talk mantra to finish a marathon with a positive and heartfelt smile on my face crossing the finish line I still have my post-its in my laptop bag and I look at them or, or like I genuinely like touch them or look at them whenever I feel self-doubt creeping in, especially in a professional or sporting setting. And did our honorary Yes Girls find it useful? Take a listen to Josephine giving her feedback at the end. Hey, Yes Girls. Thank you so much for the opportunity to take part in this challenge, this self-help challenge. I spent a little bit of time trying to think about what was the most meaningful part of the whole experience for me. And I think I'm going to keep doing this. And by this, I mean, I'm going to keep saying nice things to myself every morning. And I'm going to address myself face to face and say something really nice to myself, even before I'm fully awake with a mug of coffee. I learned so many things about myself during this challenge. I learned that I like the way my hair feels. I like the way the skin glows in the morning. It actually matters. Like, you know how people talk to plants? That's how I was talking to myself. Um, yeah, those of you who talk to plants. So I really liked the idea of creating this atmosphere of warmth and embrace and energy. And it felt really sweet and warm and like something I hadn't done in a long, long time, like giving myself a hug in the morning. So thank you for that opportunity. I'm looking forward to continuing the experience and thanks so much for adding us to the challenge. And now listen to Mel sharing her end of challenge realizations, as well as some wisdom about where we are as the world and how each of us need to get the answers that we need from within. I think the answer, no, I believe, not even just I think, I know the answer is lies within um, each of us. We'll just know. So we need to listen to who we really are on the inside. It's a very spiritual time for humanity, I think. So searching within and looking for the answers within and for the sense of direction and the compass within is where it's at. So I'm all about that. And and for me, music has always been a tool, but now it's, oh my gosh, it's such a spiritual tool now um, for me to seek and search and discover and feel within myself to just walk day by day by day through all this transition So thank you, Yes Girls, for inviting me and Joe to be part of this and and for doing what you do. And I hope that this will be helpful to people who are listening and to the community of Yes People, people who are looking to live fully. Thank you. Can we just give it up for these two? <laughs> yes. Mel and Joe. Mel and Joe. Them Mel sharing and Joe. their progress and their self reflective findings really encouraged me in my own explorations. And I found myself questioning how I talk to myself on, you know, on a regular basis. Generally, early, early mornings are the hardest for me. I think I've said this before. Early mornings when I don't wake up early and I feel either unmotivated or like dread. Um, if I don't have early mornings, like early morning engagements, Mm -hmm. I can tend to doze aimlessly or just be like, oh, I just, you know, delay the start of my day a bit more and I feel really crappy afterwards. Um, So I made a recording of that, but it's a little too vulnerable for my liking. I heard it. Yeah. She refused to add it. Yeah. Um, We don't have enough time on the podcast anyway, so we'll skip it. (laughs) But beating myself up about it isn't going to help me. So instead, I congratulate myself for the things I achieve once I wake up. And honestly, from the time I wake up to the time I go to sleep, I am constantly active. It's 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 what I am. Like, I struggle to sit and do nothing. It, it basically never happens. In fact, when I do sit and do, try and, like, just chill, I fall asleep. So I need to constantly be stimulated. Um, and 
I think I did. I, I'm I'm constantly trying to make myself proud, right? That's why I'm constantly active. And with this challenge, I did do myself proud. Yeah, by, you won some stuff. But awesome. I'm not even proud of that. What mm -hmm. I'm proud of is the way I talked to myself throughout it. I mm -hmm. felt proud of myself. Mm -hmm. um, so that's enough from my side of things. <laughs> Akumu, how about telling us about your self-help journey and why you're so obsessed with it? I mean, if you still are after seeing us go through it. So a wise man on, on Medium once said, so much self-help advice is just fluff. You know the stuff. The advice you see over and over again, but still have no idea how it applies to your life. In the same article, Sean Carnan goes on, uh, goes on to list the annoying things that are still that are so rife in the self-help advice space. And then the best part towards the end, he says, consider the source, view it through the prism of your own life. Those fortune cookie fortune cookie-esque tips aren't one size fits all and that those two sentences those two quotes from that blog uh sum up how where i'm at with with self-help in terms of relationship i mean it's been 15 years of of just reading such books um just to give you context i watch fiction but i read non-fiction um so if if i'm not watching fiction then i have to read a book that gives me something of substance not sure why I feel like that all the time. Maybe I feel like I have, I feel like I have to, you know, always be learning something. Like you, you know, you can't be, you can't do nothing. For me, I can't uh, read a book that's not teaching me anything. I think I just have that idea of books and stuff. So, uh, yeah, and it's been 15 years. So <laughs> I think people would ask, if you've been doing self-help for 15 years, shouldn't you be, you know, the, the what the do you call it? The perfect person. The patron saint <laughs> <laughs> of productivity, mm. organization, mindfulness, da, 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 da. <laughs> if only. You know, but I am not. And and I think it's it's partly because uh, this, we self-helpers, uh, okay, so there, are, so there are two reasons why I think I should have changed and why I think I have. And there are other reasons why I think I, I don't have to change in 15 years. So I think I should have changed in 15 years because honestly, there's some books that I've followed one thing Maybe seven, I don't know how many words, but I followed one thing and it changed my life. Maybe I didn't follow through. So maybe I ended up, you know, picking up five habits in a year and then ended up with one at the end of the year. But you see, that's some change. So I don't think I've changed like 0%. Maybe I've changed, you know, 37%. And it's an odd number because that I read from a book. If you give an odd number that's just random, it looks more believable so it looks like i did mathematics <laughs> that's why you could do your funny rating <laughs> that's why i do the rating 7.65 because it looks like i put some mathematics you put a lot of thought into it <laughs> and that's from one of the books that freya suggested you remember like never say i think never the word for negotiation i think you read it i i i did read that book i yeah, think they mentioned it book. it is yeah. self -help. never split the difference exactly they said when you're suggesting something i think it was that book you have to mm. say an odd number that's okay. just random. So it looks like you've thought about it. Anyway, so from 15 years of reading self-help, I think I've changed maybe 35, 37%. Uh, but I think it's impossible to change 100% because, first of all, human beings are all different. I mean, the person who, who is telling me to do something and that something worked for them has different DNA from mine. Even my own sister, who has the same DNA as me, can say something worked for her and it might not work for me. Well, and also you're constantly changing in both good and bad directions as a person. Exactly. So, so the direction that you want to take will constantly be shifting. Exactly. So that book that helped me last year might not help me mm. this year. And also, I mean, how many variables that does life have? So many infinite, variables. Infinite. So the variables that that person is talking about uh, to me in terms of tips will not work on me. So that's pretty much the space I'm at in terms of self-help. I'm more practical, more rational about it. And I think I'm, I, I'm more into reading more non-fluffy things. So right now I'm more into, you know, I read more about the mind, um, psychology, neurology, new, 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 neuroscience. <laughs> yes, neurology, same thing. Yeah. And so you're I not going to be operating on brains, not neurology. I think in another life, I would love to be a brain scientist or neurologist or something. So that's what, um, <laughs> from those realizations which I've had in the last few years, uh, I wish the same for you. And, and you, you, you is listening and you, Claire, as well. 
Um, so whether or not you'll ever read the self-help books that we'll recommend in our book club, there's one thing I'd like to point out. So yeah, again, whether or not you finally attempt to read Atomic Habits by James Clear. Never. <laughs> This is an ongoing debate. Like, honestly, no. The book the club has been trying. The more you tell me to read it, the less I'm going to read it. <laughs> the book club has been trying to get Claire to read this book. Even people who don't read self-help are, are trying to get Claire to read it. Anyway, whether you read it or not, uh, just know that uh, some of us addicts <laughs> are now beginning to be realistic and practical about the whole self-help mayhem. Uh, so for now, the ratings. Going to rating you, Melissa, and Joe. I'll definitely be generous, partly because all of you inspired me uh, by doing things that even I, a 15-year-old self-help self addict, has never done. I mean, I've never really explored the self-talk book section. Mm -hmm. Never, never. Funny enough. Uh, even 15 years. <laughs> and the other reason I'm rating you guys highly is because I don't want any of you to go into a negativity spiral <laughs> and then start blaming me for your negative <laughs> thoughts. You know. very anti-self-help. <laughs> exactly. So I'd like you guys to keep, and I'd like you guys to keep doing such things after this. So each of you get a flat rating of 12. 12. 12 over 10. You know, I'm doing the same thing I did in the social media challenge. <laughs> Being generous. Yeah. So p please do the same for me next time. Uh, so going beyond <laughs> 10 means you gave me something I didn't expect. You taught me something new, inspired me. And, and just like in the social media challenge, you know, it, I mean, it just went over and above everything you, uh, you were given to. So Thank what do you, you think? Yeah, I didn't give myself a rating, but I mean, in the spirit of self-talk, I kind of have to just say I did my best. I was brilliant. I was are you, are the best you going that to, I could be. Are you going to explore self-help? <sighs> million I'm dollar question. Keep, I'm just going to keep telling myself I can, I want, I will. Good enough. Good enough. Whatever I'm doing, if it's, you know, going to the toilet and trying to push out <laughs> something, if it's, you know, writing a book, if it's yeah. uh, trying to change the world, I can, I want, I will. I love it. It works. At least there's some little self-help thingy in you after this <laughs> challenge, which I'm glad about. So, guys, if you want to learn more about uh, the books, the self-help theories, the techniques that Claire, Melissa, and Josephine used in this show, check out the show notes. Uh, for those of you who don't know show notes, they're just fancy words for the episode description. And uh, also check out our, our Instagram page, at Yes Girls Podcast, to find out everything else we'll share about this particular episode. Yeah, and if you want to suggest something that you think the Yes Girls should do, be, or learn for a future episode, send us your ideas. If you want to share your expertise, your business, or passion, get in touch with us. That's at Yes Girls Podcast across all platforms, or all the good ones. You and this good one. <laughs> <laughs> we also share behind-the-scenes photos, videos of our various experiences, uh, so that you can get to see a little of what we put ourselves through in the name of doing, being, and learning for your entertainment. And education! So now we would like to write our gratitude journal about Dan Aceda from Semabox, assisted by the very able Doris Onyango, who produced this show for us. We are also very honored, we were, and we still are very honored when we manifested Sam Kagwara <laughs> of Eternal Concepts, who appeared and designed our epic logo. I know, it's epic, right? And uh, overall, he, he designed our brand identity. We are also extremely blessed to manifest manifest Pedro Brian, who came into our lives to compose our theme music, our theme song. And guess what? We created a vision board, a vision board, and out popped Melissa and Josephine, our honorary Yes Girls for this episode. And on that note, please be sure to self-help yourself to their Afri Africa Podfest uh, website and pages on social media, all in the show notes. And we would wake up at ev at 5 a.m. every day, meditate, journal, and create a whole new Marie Kondo home organizing system for you, our dear yes girls and boys and everything in between, because we love you all so much, just as much as we love ourselves, because that's the best self-help self advice anyone can ever give you. Love yourself and everyone around you. Uh, well, maybe not the top advice you'll find out there, but not bad. Not it's bad. good for me. Yes. See you all next episode. Wait, 
next episode, it'll be a new season. <gasps> season three. Where we can guarantee. Yeah, they didn't cancel us. We are continuing. <laughs> no one's canceling us. <laughs> but we will. We guarantee that we'll be going outside of our comfort zone and stepping into the shoes of someone else. Mm -hmm. We'll also have a special episode that will be kept secret until release. What do you think? What will we be saying yes to next? Can't say, but maybe I can give a hint. <gasps> That we will certainly be stepping into some big, huge, massive shoes. So we'll definitely need uh, to self-talk our way into some confidence. But you'll have to tune in to find out. So for now, that's it from us. The Yes Girl! Season 2 is done! <laughs> I can, I want, I will, I can, I want, I will. <laughs> <laughs>